I've had a few of you request the Miss Kitty by American Stitcher, so today we're going to do the full tutorial on it. I'm going to go over a few features of the bag before we get started. There are two different types of front pockets that you can have. This is obviously one that comes up here in the middle, and this pocket is kind of like a, what do they call it, like a pouch pocket, it goes all the way through, fits a lot, it's a huge pocket. So I have one of those in the back and one of those in the front. Now the alternative is just a regular slip pocket here, and she has that in the pattern. It's a great place if you have any kind of embroidery that you may want to put on the bag or something you want to add to the bag, you put it right here. It, it just is an awesome option. So it has a crossbody strap. In the back we have a concealed pocket. So you could th see this goes all the way through. You can use this for anything. Um, true to American Stitcher's patterns, it is a concealed pocket for carrying. If you carry a gun, a handgun, certainly do that. However, if you don't, you can still make this bag. This is a great place to hide your wallet so it's not just apparent in the middle of your bag. You can put your extra cash in there. You can put your candy in there. You can put whatever you want in there. Whatever you want to hide, is this is just a perfect spot. It's just not in the middle of your bag when you open the bag. So don't be afraid of concealed carry pockets. They are fantastic. The other thing it has is on the in, nice zipper opening at the top. And then we have a slip pocket, and I know it's hard to see, but you have a slip pocket on one side and you have a zipper pocket on the other side. Okay? So we're going to run through this whole thing. Um, it is not difficult as far as making it. You know, I mean, there's some challenging parts, but I wouldn't say it's hard. You just need to take your time with it. And then hopefully this tutorial will help you get through it. If you're a beginner, grab some scrap fabrics and just give it a try. That's how we improve our skills is by trying new things. I am going to say I use vinyl for the entire exterior of the bag. Watch out for that. My, this kind of tan colored was a little thicker than normal. This was not, the snake, but the, this was. And I had a, and you're going to see where I have a little struggle, is up here in these seams when I top stitched, it was a little difficult. So you may want to consider using some maybe cotton canvas or something for the exterior of the bag instead of all faux or vinyl. Especially if you have a domestic machine, you won't be able to get through some of these layers with the concealed carry pocket and the foam and the main, and especially if you do a pocket like this up here, you have a couple extra layers up here. So just watch that. Be aware of what your machine can handle and be aware of the actual fabrics that you're using. So, let's get started. Okay, let's talk about pattern pieces. So you're gonna have your main body, and the main body, you're going to cut two main body pieces. And once you cut these, you're going to go ahead and put foam on the back of each of them. Now, if you do not have an industrial machine, you're going to fuse your foam. You're going to actually cut the seam allowance out of your foam and fuse it on. If you have an industrial machine, you can just go ahead and baste it on and you should be fine. So you're going to have two main pieces with the foam. Then you're going to have two concealed pocket pieces with that same pattern piece. One of them you're going to have foam on, the other one you're not. Now, Gail suggests using a heavier fabric for this, and I'm actually using waterproof canvas, so I'm not going to put any woven fuse or any kind of interfacing on the concealed pocket pieces. Then you're going to have your gusset. Now, the gusset, you're going to have two lining, two main fabric. Okay, there's my main fabric, two lining, and on the lining, you're going to put some interfacing. On the main, you're going to base some foam. And the same thing applies if you're using an industrial machine, baste it on. If not, fuse it. Okay, then you're going to have 
two lining fabric pieces. And so I'm using this linen for that and I have woven interfacing on the back. You're going to have your top lining piece and Gail suggests using your um, lining for this, actual lining fabrics. I'm actually using my face fabric, so I cut two of those. That's the top of the lining. This has a zipper, so you have your zipper placket. She suggests four lining pieces for this. I cut two main pieces and two lining pieces. On the lining pieces, I put some woven views. On the main pieces, I did not put anything. Same thing on this top lining. Since I used the main fabric, which is a, um, a vinyl, I did not put anything on the back of this. Then you have your interior slip pocket piece. And I cheated a little bit with this. It says to cut two of these. I actually cut one of them on the fold. So the pattern piece kind of looks like this. And I'm just folding it in half. And then you'll see I'll just top stitch this and then I can sew it right in. Now there's two different types of exterior pockets. One of them looks like this and it's just going to go on the front of the bag. I chose to do this one here and it just kind of gives it a, I think because of the snake here I wanted to kind of show that off a little bit so I decided to go with this one. So you're going to cut two main pieces and you're going to cut two lining pieces. On your lining pieces you're going to put some interfacing. On the main pieces, I had, did not put anything on this because there's a lot of foam and all in the actual bag already. Then you have your interior zipper pocket pieces. That is um, the lining fabric with the interfacing. I actually cut a zipper facing because, you know, I like to do zipper facings instead of um, sewing a piece of lining on and turning. So we'll do a zipper facing. And then you're going to need a piece of Decoville Heavy or Peltex for the bottom. I went ahead and already did a little bit of prep work here. You have a crossbody strap. So I went ahead and finished that crossbody. And you've seen me do these before. You fold the edges in to the long edges into the center. You fold it again and then you stitch down. Add your hardware, you're good to go on that. And then also handle pieces. I went ahead and did the same thing. I have my two handle pieces ready to go. I have strap connectors. Now, on these strap connectors, I actually, because I'm using a contrasting thread today, which is a little different for me. I usually don't do that. But um, I went ahead and did two rows of stitching on my handles and on my crossbody strap. So I'm going to do the same thing on my strap connectors. So what I did with these is I folded the center in. You're going to have six of these because you have two for the front, two for the back for the handles, and then you have the crossbody strap. So I stitched a fourth of an inch in, and then when I stitch it on the bag, I'm going to use an eighth of an inch. So it's going to give kind of the same look as this here. So I have all those six strap connectors stitched and ready to go on the bag. I also have zippers. You're going to need four zippers. And Gail tells you the sizes and all that in the pattern. And then for hardware, you're going to need the hardware for your crossbody strap. Then in addition, you're going to need something to attach the handles to the bag. So I'm just going to use rectangle rings. So I have four of those. Of course, I have my zippers. I'm going to add purse feet. And then a couple of D-rings. Um, so that you can put your crossbody strap on. And then on my zipper at the top, I'm going to put a little zipper end on that. You can use fabric instead if you want. So I have all my hardware ready to go. We're going to need some rivets. And that should be everything, so let's get started. Okay, we're going to strap, start with these strap connectors. And go ahead and measure. I'm going to line them all up. They're all the same size. Measure down. what Gail tells us to measure down. And then I'm going to go ahead and slip a D-ring and or rectangle ring on each one. So I'm just going to slide this on. I'm going to fold it right at that mark. A little bit of tape. Okay. 
put some tape on each one here. It'd be a lot easier to do it all at once. Okay, we're going to fold right on that mark, fold down, and then we're going to take the other side of the connector and we're going to fold it up. And then we're going to sew these on the bag. So let me put a little bit here. Just make sure you don't put it too far over so you see it from the front of the bag once you sew it on. So we've got one. Okay, let's start with our gusset pieces. Put these aside. We're going to measure down, make a mark, and then we're going to put our actual strap connector right against that mark. So again, I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided tape to hold this on for me while I sew and rivet them on. So go ahead and put the strap right up against that mark. We're going to center it. And do the same thing on this one. Now we're going to go ahead and sew them on. I'm going to mark three quarters of an inch down so I know where to turn. On each one that's just going to make it a little easier as I sew here. and tie this off in the back. I like to put a little bit of double-sided tape on that just to make sure it doesn't come undone. Okay, and now I'm going to measure for my rivet. So actually I'm gonna put two rivets in here, one in this upper section one here in this upper section, and then one down here below. So just to make sure that I'm even on both, I'm just gonna measure down, and I'm going a quarter of an inch from the top here, and I'm going an inch from the bottom. And those are where my two rivets are gonna be. So let's punch that. some rivets in. Okay, I'm going to go set these rivets and then I'm going to repeat for the other handle. Okay, I have these completed. So we're going to set these aside for just a minute and let's look at the main handle pieces. We need to mark the centers and I'm going to go ahead and mark the top and the bottom. We will need both. And then we're going to place the connectors on this main piece. All of the measurements for that are in the pattern. Typically what I do is just 
kind of line up my ruler where I need to. I'm going to make a mark and I know this is where the corner of the connector needs to go. There. Same thing on this one. And we're going to add these connectors exactly the same way. Well, we're going to go ahead and sew them on and then we will rivet them in place. So I'm going to put a little bit of double-sided tape first to hold them on there. If you, I'm trying to get through all the American Stitchers patterns. Um, I think I still have Annie O, Little Hun, um, maybe the Iris. I'm sure there's a few others, but leave a comment in the section below and let me know which one you want to see next. I'm trying to get them on my radar. I'd like to get through the rest of them this year for sure. That's my goal. And so um, if you let me know what you want to see next, it'll just help me kind of keep on track and make sure that I get through them all. Okay, I'm going to look at this, make sure it looks straight to me. Do the same thing on this one. I'm going to go ahead and mark just like I did on the other strap connectors, just so that I'm sewing the same across the same width. That's just kind of a easy way to do it to make sure that everything's lined up. And I'm marking uh, three quarters of an inch down. This is not in the pattern, this measurement. This is just something I do to try to make it. I'll line up a little easier. Okay, so I'm going to start by sewing across the top. And start about a quarter of an inch away from the side. I am going to put a little piece. I feel like this has tendency. I think it's just thicker. I don't want to mess up my leather here or my faux leather. Or the hardware.
Okay, so now we have all of our connectors on. You're going to sew all this right sides together, but you're going to mostly sew these curves here. So line up these edges. And you're just putting your exterior and your main right sides together. Okay, and then we're just going to sew along these curved edges right here. Now we want to make sure that we clip these edges because it's a curve. If we don't clip it, then the fabric's going to bunch up as we turn it and it's not going to look good. So just go ahead and cut two, but not through your stitching. Make little snips. Or if you have pinking shears and you want to cut this with pinking shears, you could certainly do that as well. I'm just going to snip this in. Okay, and then we're going to turn it. Now, if you're using cotton here or something that you can press, then go ahead and press this. I'm using this vinyl, so I cannot do that. So I'm just going to kind of roll these seams out. Put a few clips and then I'll top stitch. And I am going to make sure that the lining is not showing by rolling it a little bit to the back. So if anything, I want the back fabric or the front, uh, the front fabric here to show a little bit in the back, not the back to show through the front, okay? So I'm going to baste this across, sew down, and then go ahead and baste the rest of this pocket together. Just take it slow with it being a curve. And take one more stitch.
okay? And that's the exterior pocket. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one exactly the same way. Okay, both pockets are done. Put my name plate right here. You could certainly put it down here. Either place is really great. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and attach this to the bag. And we're gonna clip this in place. And basically you're gonna line up your bottoms. Okay, we're gonna baste this in place. So we're just going to baste here at the top and then we're gonna baste all the way around down here. Make this, make this one piece. Get my hardware out of the way. a little bit of extra pocket here I'm just gonna trim that off I mean it's just barely an eighth of an inch it's not much and it's just here in the corner just here on these edges so I mean you see that's hardly anything but just enough to clean it up and make all the edges nice and straight Okay, we're going to repeat for this one. So we have these two front pieces completed. We're going to go ahead and finish up our gusset. So you're going to put the gusset right sides together, matching up these short ends here. We're going to stitch, and then we're going to top stitch. Now we're going to actually open the seam up and we're going to top stitch down each side from the right side. Okay, from here we need to put on our Peltex or Decogo Heavy. So get that piece and mark the center of the long edge. So I'm just going to mark here and then we want to line up this center here with the center on our seam. You want this to be out of your seam allowance, so you're going to have about a half inch on either side. So I'm going to go to the iron, I'm going to fuse this on, and then we'll add our purse feet. Okay, for my purse feet, I'm going to mark one inch from the Decoville Light or Peltex. I'm going to measure one inch over and one inch down. Now you can put one in the center if you want. I think I'm gonna skip that. I don't wanna take a chance on, it's 
especially since I can't see my stitches from this side. I don't want to accidentally cut my stitches and have the bottom of the bag come apart. So I'm just going to put the four. I have the little um, kind that have the feet that separate. So I'm just going to make a little slit here. And this is one of my favorite things. It is a Zoid craft knife. It has a nice grip here, um, rubber grip for your handles or for your fingers, and it screws and unscrews to get the blade in and out. It has a nice cap that snaps on, and so uh, and it's metal. So if you're interested in this, I do sell that on my website. So make sure you push these down real good. And then once I open them up, I'm going to put some double-sided tape on here just to kind of protect it from the lining. And also it helps hold it in place so they don't come through. Okay, we are moving right along. So now we're going to work on the concealed pocket. So here are two concealed pockets. One has foam and one does not. If you want to make this a concealed carry bag, meaning that you can carry a handgun in it, you're going to put some Velcro here. Uh, I actually don't, don't have any Velcro on hand at the moment, and I have done this in all of the other American Stitchers videos that I've done. So you can refer back to that to see how I stitch that Velcro on. So we're going to just skip that one step, and we're going to start going ahead and putting this concealed pocket together. Of course, this doesn't have to just be used for guns. You can use your, you can use it to um, carry your money candy, whatever you would like to hide from somebody, <laughs> including the kids. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to take the main body piece here, and I'm going to mark, Gail has spots here where the zippers go, so I'm just going to mark that by putting a little clip. I'm going to do it on both concealed pocket pieces. And then I'm going to do it only on the back panel of the main body piece because this pocket goes in the back. Okay, so I've got that one done. I'm going to clip this. And then I'm going to get my back panel. I also sell these scissors on my website. They're Kai, and they're great for making snips like this. You see me use them quite a bit. Again, one of my favorite things. We're also going to take our gusset and do exactly the same thing. There's markings on here, and it's only on one side, not the other side. So on the pattern piece, they're on this side, but not on this side. So you want to... When you mark this, you're going to mark this side, and then you're going to flip it this way so that it's upside down and mark your other side. We're going to take our zippers and put some double-sided tape on them. And I use eighth of an inch double-sided tape for this. I'm going to put it on the front and on the back. Now, because I'm using zipper by the yard, 
I need to go ahead and turn my edges in. So to do that, I'm just going to mark down an inch from one side. I'm going to split the zipper. I'm going to pinch right there at the inch mark and then fold it up so that it creates a little L or a little bend here. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. And you just want to make sure these two sides are even. Do that for both of these. If you're not using zipper by the yard, you don't have to do this. But since I am, I'm going to go ahead and stitch to hold these down. it on both sides. We're going to start with the main part of the bag. I'm going to hold off on my pole for just a minute, but I'm going to put the right side of the zipper on the right side of the bag and I'm going to match up this little L part with my top slit on the bag. Now my zipper is going to extend past my bottom slit and that's okay, but I don't want to sew past that. So I'm just going to put a clip right where that ends. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for this side and put the top of the teeth. So basically the top of the teeth, top of the teeth right here is against this slit. Okay, so you see that? And then I'm going to put a clip at my bottom slit so that I know where to stop sewing. Okay, you can base these on, but what I'm going to do instead, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and put my pocket piece on. Now this is the pocket piece without the foam. We're gonna put this right on top. I'm gonna to take my the back off my tape and that's the good thing about tape is that it helps hold this in place so you don't, it basically takes the place of basting if you feel comfortable with that. And there's my slit right there. If you want to put a couple of clips, you still can. I will do that. And then same thing on this side. Let's remove the tape. Now you do have a little bit of a curve here, so make sure your zipper follows that curve. Okay, I'm going to match up my top slits. If your pocket is a little tight, pull it so that the ends match because your pocket you don't want it to show from the front. So if it is slightly smaller, I mean, mine's very slightly smaller, I'm going to just go ahead and pull it so that when I turn this, the back pocket will pull and I'll pull these sides in. So we're going to sew this on, both zippers here. And of course we don't have our pulls on yet, so we're okay. Don't sew beyond the slits. So I'm gonna start at the bottom slit and I'm gonna stop at the top slit. Same thing on this side. Now 
Make sure you back stitch real good, the top and at the bottom. And then we're going to flip it. Okay, so see how this kind of got kind of a hole here? That's okay. You want to push this down so that these zippers turn out. And I'm actually going to clip this to hold this down. Gonna kind of finger press. And you're gonna have a little bit of a bump here where your pocket uh, is sewn in on the sides. And depending on which pocket you put on, but regardless, you're still gonna have a bump. So just it's okay to have that. Your top, see how my slit is sticking out? That's good. My teeth go right in on the bottom of that, and that's what you want. Because now we're gonna be sewing this to something, and we want that free without the zipper being in the way. So you're gonna have that at the top, and you're also going to have it at the bottom, where these two slits are now coming together, and the zipper is out of the way. And if your slit isn't deep enough, just slit a little bit more. You know, go ahead and cut it just a little bit more so that you have your end sticking out so that they can be sewn. So I'm going to clip the top. Okay, see how my two little wings up here? I can see it from the front maybe a little better. So we need to flip this over so it's right side up. Take our gusset and make sure you have the side with the clips now. Let's see. Where's my clips? This side. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over. <laughs> okay, I got it. So we're going to take and put the gusset now on the zipper, same way we did the main, with the teeth just below our slits. Okay, my slit doesn't look big enough. Let me slit it a little bit more. I'm going to take this tape or the backing off the tape here. And we're going to line the top of the teeth just below that slit. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clip this as I go. Just to help hold it. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom here. Now, if you think you might have a hard time getting your poles on, actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put my poles on first. I was going to do it after, but I think I'm going to do it first. That way I don't struggle with it. So let's go ahead and put these poles on. So of course you're going to start from the bottom. 
I like to keep the pulls off as long as possible so they're not in my way when I sew. So you see I have my old fork here. Um, I had bought one of these thingies and it's not my favorite thing. <laughs> I like my fork better. I just feel like, I don't know if it's because it's taller or it just holds the uh, zipper or the zipper pull better, but I'm off a little bit on that. I'm going to do that one more time. Okay. Alright, so let's do this one more time. We'll take our gusset. And we're going to stick it on. I'm going to put a few clips. Now, do not clip the bottom of this gusset. You're just going to pull this around and you're going to do the same thing on this side. We're just going to clip the gusset right on. My edges are lined up. Okay, keep your bottom open. I'm just going to fold the bottom like this. Okay. And now you want to get the concealed carry pocket piece with the foam on it. And we're going to put that right side on the table so that the two concealed carry pocket pieces are together. Okay, so let me zoom you out a little bit. Okay, so you have our pocket piece here. Here's our contraption. Here's the right side of the bag. We're going to put the two concealed pocket pieces together like this. And you're going to take the backing off your tape and we're going to stick it down. And then we're going to clip all this together. Now you could certainly base this on first if you'd like. And we're just going to make sure we line up our teeth with the top of that or the bottom of that clip. And we're just going to sew, when we sew this, down to our bottom clip. Don't go past your zipper. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It's a little funky, I know, but it works out really well. So let's peel the back off this tape. Going to pull our pocket piece. If you have your hook and loop tape, it's going to be right here. Your Velcro will be on this piece. Okay. 
And just take your time with this. Okay, now before I sew, I am going to just kind of make sure my gusset's going to fit okay and I'm not going to have any problems. So I know where the center is because we mark that in the beginning. So I'm just going to kind of match that up, put a clip. I just want to make sure that my gusset isn't way off. And you know, you know, it's not going to be exact because remember we're going to have to put clips in here so that it'll fit. But I just want to make sure that it's not, I mean, that'll be fine. I think that's going to be fine too once we clip. Okay. So we should be good. You just want to make sure it's not really big or really small. So we're going to start here at our clip. We're going to backstitch. We're going to sew down to our other clip. Then we're going to turn over and do the same thing on the other side. Now don't forget you have your zipper pulls on this time. So you're going to have to make sure you move them. Feel it right there, so I'm going to pull it up. I think. There we go. And then stitch down to my slit. Repeat for the other side. to do is to go ahead and finish up sewing the pieces of the gusset that are not sewn yet. So that's going to be this top up here. It's going to be all along this bottom and then it's going to be the top over here. So that's where these little wings come in that we have. So I'm going to start by clipping this here. since I'm here. Let's do the other side here too. So essentially what I have is my gusset, my main piece, and then my two concealed pocket pieces. I'm going to clip my center down here and again I'm clipping everything together. And then of course we need to clip the straight edge which in this case is our gusset. So we're just going to put little clips in here so that it'll lay nice and flat. Now, when you do this part here, you've got your little wings, remember. You're gonna take your zipper and kind of pull it out of the way. And you're gonna sew your clips. You're gonna have all these clips. You're gonna pull and make sure they're lined up. And we're gonna clip them all. So I see here that my main piece, and you can probably see too, is a little bit bigger than my gusset. Can't quite get it all in there. It's okay. I'm not worried about it. It'll be fine. It's going to work out just fine. Pull my zipper out of the way. Go ahead and clip.
This side fits a little better. Okay, so we're going to stitch. Here we go. So the main thing with this is you don't want to, again, stitch beyond the clip. You're just going to stitch to the clip and from the clip, but not beyond the clip. Pulling your zipper out of the way, we're going to do the same thing down here. You're going to kind of start where you stopped. And you do want to sew your gusset up just a little bit easier. to my clip so I'm going to pull my zipper and stitch right up to it. All right I'm going to go ahead and trim off this extra I had over here on this side for some reason. Clean up this corner as well. I'm going to look in here and make sure everything looks good and it does. Let's turn it so you can see and then we'll stitch the other side on. see right here I missed <laughs> actually I didn't miss I just didn't sew it so I guess I need to sew that so let's sew it but otherwise it looks good it's a cool pocket I like that see the gusset all that looks really good here and here as well very nice good looking bag Okay, let me turn it back, stitch the one spot I forgot, and then we will sew the other side on. Alright, so go ahead and get everything all clipped together again. Good. So let's sew our other side on. So we know where our centers are. We had already marked that. So we're going to start there. Match that with the bottom seam. I'm going to match the top up here. Now this is the easier side right now. If you could do the other side, you can definitely do this side. This is squeaky vinyl. <laughs> I'm sure you can hear it. <laughs> it sounds funny. Okay. I'm going to clip my edges here. See? Got to clip the gusset to let it make it fit. Just going to put some. 
little clips here. Always better to start out with short clips and you can always clip more if you need. And then once you do that, see how nicely that comes together. Gussets take a little practice, but once you, if you keep, if you, you know, if you have a hard time with them, keep trying them. Don't get frustrated. And you do them enough and you'll be amazed at how much better you get. It's just like anything else. But I hated gussets when I first started this. Oh my gosh. I could not get a gusset in to save my life. So always clip your straight edge, which is going to be your gusset. Um, always sew from the gusset side. So I'm going to sew with the bag up like this. I'm looking at the gusset. I'm going to sew along here so that as I get to these corners, I can go ahead and work out any possible tucks. these corners a little bit um, if you see from this side you can see the seam allowance so I have some there I can cut off on both sides so I'm going to do that just make the bag lay a little better there in those corners y'all I'm gonna do one more thing while I have this turn this way and that stitch the top here so what I'm gonna do this is on the concealed carry side you see the pocket there your concealed carry pocket it's still open I'm going to clip this and I'm just going to stitch this closed so that when I go to sew the bag together, I'm not going to have a problem with it shifting. So from here we get to turn the bag. So let's do that. Cute. All right, so the hard part's done. If you've done that, you can finish this up. We're going to start on the lining. So grab your slip pocket, and because I cut mine on the fold, like I said in the beginning, I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch this. If you didn't, you would put this right sides together, sew it, and then turn it and top stitch it. So I'm just basically saving myself a step here.
So we're going to place this on one of the pieces of the lining and decide how many pockets we want. So I think what I want is a center pen pocket and then a couple of side pockets. So I'm going to get my ruler and my Soline Air Erase, Erase Pen. Again, one of my favorite things. You can find that on my website. Um, let's mark the center here first so we know exactly what that is because we're going to need that in the future. So mark this, mark this. I'm going to put a couple of clips to hold this in place. Make sure it doesn't shift. Okay, so I'm going to go out and it, uh, let's see. I'm going to say three quarters of an inch from the center on both sides. And draw a couple lines. So what I'm going to do is start over here on this side. I'm going to stitch all the way down. I'm going to go up, over, down, up, over, down, and then finish up over here on this side. Then I'm going to put some rivets in here. Rivets make it look nice and gives it a little extra stability because these pockets are going to have a lot of wear going in, people going in and out, getting things out, and I just like to have those rivets there to kind of help hold everything in place. So as I come to that first line, I'm just going to turn, head up, when I get to the top, I'm going to turn, come over one stitch, and then head back down. Base to the other line. Do exactly the same thing. finish up here. So I'm going to put a rivet here and here. I'm not going to worry about on the sides because we're also going to be sewing this again into our side seam. So I feel like the sides will be okay. This is just something I like to do. One thing I'm going to make sure of is that I don't get this on any seam. I don't want to cut my stitches with this hole punch. I'm going to go right in the middle of those two lines. I'm also going to add a piece of Decoville Heavy on the back to kind of hold it all in so that it doesn't pull through the fabric. Okay, I'll go set these and then this side here is done. Okay, so get your other lining piece. You're going to get your overlay if you're choosing to use an overlay, which I think is a lot easier, so I would suggest you do that. And then you're going to get your two pocket pieces in your zipper. Now, I do this part at my domestic machine, so I already have it done, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So you take your pocket piece. You see here, you see the wrong side of the zipper with the right side of the pocket pieces. 
the right side of the zipper with the wrong side of the pocket pieces. It seems a little strange, but this is how it's done. So you're going to take, to do this, you're going to take your zipper and you're going to put the wrong side of your zipper against the right side of your fabric, like this. You're going to stitch it. Then you're going to flip it and you're going to stitch down the seam allowance to hold that seam allowance down. Then you're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. You're going to take and put this wrong side right here against the right side of the pocket, the other pocket piece, and do the same thing. And when you do that, this is the result. So put your zipper pull on, don't forget that. Put that aside for just a minute and put some double-sided tape on the back of your pocket overlay. We're going to mark the center and we're going to lay this on. So I'm just going to put a little crease in the center here so I know where that is instead of drawing a line. And then I'm going to place this, it is about an inch and a half from the center, an inch and a half from the top. Now in the pattern what she has you do is to get another piece of your lining and put that on, stitch it and fold it to the wrong side. You can certainly do it that way and she has instructions on how to do that if you choose to do it that way. My overlay piece I cut two by nine and then three quarters of an inch from each side I marked lines and then I cut out the center box. So I'm just going to find the center of my overlay and put it about an inch and a half down from the top. So now what you want to do is take and stitch around the outside of this box only. all looking neat I'm going to pull my threads through to the back so I can tie them off like I did with the handles. And I'm just going to make sure that I end in the same hole I started. So from here we're going to cut out this middle section. Now this doesn't have to be neat, it doesn't have to be perfect. All you're going to do is to make sure when you get to the edge here, you put the tip of your scissors underneath because you don't want to cut your overlay. So see how I put my scissors right underneath and cut to the edge. And then flip this over and just cut the lining. Don't cut the overlay. And you don't have to be perfect with this. This is what I like about using this method is you get a nice neat result without having to spend a lot of time trying to get everything nice and neat. Okay, so here's our back. Not very pretty, but look at how nice the front is. Looks so good. So we're just going to take some double-sided tape. I usually use quarter-inch double-sided tape for this, and we're going to put it on the zipper. Now, typically, you want your zipper pull closing to the left. Doesn't have to be. If you do it wrong, don't worry, because I've done it wrong many times. It works out great for a left-hand person. Or if you are left-handed, you may want to change it and have your zipper pull going to the right. So either way your bag you can do whatever you want. So I'm just going to put this tape right on the very edge of the zipper 
the actual zipper tape. Then I'm going to peel it off and I'm going to center this right over or right underneath your opening. So just make sure you're putting it even. And what I mean by that is you put it too far over, you're not going to have enough zipper to close, to sew this and close. So make sure it's kind of centered on the zipper right to left. Okay, so when you're happy with the result, with your pocket open, don't close your pocket yet, we're now going to stitch around the inside of this little square. I'm going to pull my threads through to the back again like I did when I did the outside section. I'm just going to make sure I end in the same hole I started in. I'm going to tie these threads off and this time I'm going to burn the threads because I don't want double-sided tape on the inside of my pocket. So I'm just going to make sure I tie a knot real good. And then I'm going to clip these off and just burn the edge here. Okay, when you do this method, your pockets might be off a little bit, and that's okay. If they are, just go ahead and clip, cut the bottom one. And it looks like I'm actually gonna be running into the bottom of the bag. So I'm gonna actually cut about um, an inch off both of these. So from here, go ahead and clip the sides and then we're gonna stitch down the sides only and leave the bottom open. And we're going to do that because we are gonna pull the bag through the bottom and then use the pocket opening to stitch the bottom of the bag closed, which we will do here shortly. So put this right side up. You're just gonna pull this away and you're just gonna start stitching up here on your zipper. Back stitch real good, come all the way down, back stitch. And then we're gonna turn it, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. You're gonna back stitch, come up and back stitch. And I ran out of bobbin, so let me replenish that and finish up this pocket. Now when you've done that, you can go ahead and trim back your zipper and your pocket if you'd like, if you have extra. Once I do that, I am just going to burn the edge of the zipper again to make sure I don't have any problems with that in the future. Okay, now, if you want, you can actually add a second slip pocket here. I do that a lot of times with the bags when I have a larger bag like this, it's because there's so much room here. A lot of people love pockets. So if you wanna do that, go ahead and cut a second piece, fold it in half, stitch up the edges, turn it, and just go ahead and put it right on here. I'm gonna not do that because the pattern does not call for it. 
we're going to take our gusset and put it right sides together. We're going to stitch and then we're going to top stitch just like we did for the main gusset piece. Open up that seam allowance and go ahead and top stitch. Okay, now the gusset's done. So we need to work on our zipper placket here. So the first thing we're going to do is to turn back our zipper at the very top. I'm gonna to mark this about an inch in just so I know where to pinch and turn it. And then what I'm going to do is pinch right on that line. Get a couple pins. So open it up, pinch on the line, and then fold it back on top of itself. So you're forming a little right angle. Okay, just like that. So I'm gonna pinch. Fold it back on itself, and then I'm just going to make sure that these look straight, you know, and even. I don't want one to be lower than the other. And then I'm going to stitch this in place. So from here, you want to take your four pieces you've got you might have four lining pieces depending on how you decided to do it I've got two main pieces and two lining pieces I'm going to turn them all over and I'm going to put double-sided tape quarter inch double-sided tape on the back here and here now I specifically say quarter inch because that's what the pattern calls for is a quarter inch seam allowance here some patterns call for half inch so you just need to make sure that you pay attention to what the pattern says there and I'm going to put it here. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut these apart. Put two of them aside. I'm going to take my main piece and I'm going to go ahead and fold over where I have the tape, just that, by that quarter inch. Okay, I'm going to fold over one side of the lining piece only. going to take my I'm going to pull my zipper apart and I'm going to put a little bit of eighth of an inch double-sided tape on here here I'm going to put it on these just put it down one side Okay, on the main piece, go ahead and peel the backing off. And then line your the edge of the zipper 
where the teeth is are just below this fold okay so you see where the fold ends there I'm going to put the teeth just below that and then along this edge now don't pull your zipper just lay your zipper down right on top and then I'm going to take the backing off the tape of the lining and the side that's folded I'm going to line up first so I'm just going to make sure that my folds are even and when I mean even I mean even this way I want to make sure that they're one isn't further up or down than the other and I'm going to lay this on very carefully here don't pull and then when I get to the other side I'm going to peel the backing off of the short edge and fold it so that's exactly even with the main piece so now I'm going to go ahead and stitch this and then we'll do the other side Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the other one, but on the main piece, what I'm going to do is fold over one edge, and I'm going to compare it with this one as I'm folding over the second edge. I want to make sure they're the same size. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to fold over one edge of the lining. Now when you put the second part of the zipper on, you want to make sure that you're doing it opposite of this one. So I usually have to think about this here. So the zipper goes together like this. So this needs to go like this. Okay. I've done this wrong before and I end up with two edges that are exactly the same. So you may want to keep your zipper together until you finish the first side. Then when you go to do the second, you'll know which side to put the tape on. So I'm going to line the teeth up just beyond that fold. I'm just going to lay this down. So this is how it's lined up. See how the teeth are just below that fold. All right, so I'm going to line this up here. Make sure my long edges are lined up, don't pull. And then take the tape off of the short edge and fold it so it's even with the main piece. And then we'll stitch this. I'm going to trim my zipper burn that edge and now we're going to fold this so that the wrong sides are together clip it and then we're going to top stitch so I like to do the short ends first make sure they line up and then go ahead and do the long edge. Now sometimes it makes it easier if you put your zipper together and that way you have something to hold on to to kind of pull this part. 
I think I'll do that. Because otherwise, as you stitch this, you're trying to hold your zipper this way and pull it, where if this is together, you can pull it a little easier. So let me get this one clipped, and then I'll put my zipper on, and we'll do that. So I'm just going to slide this on. This doesn't have to be perfect at this point. It's just to help me top stitch. Okay, so now when I top stitch, we're going to go all around this square. And then we're going to go all around this square. Now, another thing too is you may want to have an extra piece of your um, faux or some, something to protect it because if you have a walking foot machine, a lot of times this is where it's going to catch, your walking foot is going to catch, and you're going to end up messing up your project. So just be prepared for that. So right here, as I turn, I'm going to stick this underneath. Take a few and then I'm going to push it back or push it a little further. You can see that this piece is chewed up quite a bit. I think you can see that. And that's just because of things like this. See how it's grabbing right there? That's why it's there. going to form a little hump jumper here and stick the extra piece of leather in there. Do this side. So I'm going to create my little hump jumper here by folding this. And then sticking it in.
So you see here it kind of went crazy, but that's going to be in my seam allowance, so I'm okay with that. Nobody's going to see that. Okay, so from here, go ahead and remove your zipper hole. Mark your centers. And I always start with the side of the lining that has the zipper because I want my poles to be going in the same direction. So that's going to be this one. I want them to close the same way. So I'm going to line up the center, I'm going to clip it, and take my other piece, do the same thing. We're going to base these on and then we're going to put our lining tops on. Now this does curve a little bit, so make sure that you line up the edges even if you have to curve it just a tad. I'm pushing this up here because I want to make sure that my two edges meet. You see here they're not quite meeting. I'm actually pushing this up as I stick my needle in to make sure that they meet. I'm going to push this up as well as I get closer to the edge. Just a very slight curve. Okay, get your lining tops and we'll go ahead and mark the centers. So because it is on a curve, kind of place it down, take a look at it. Make sure you're going to be putting it on the right way. The longest side goes against the lining. So we're going to clip it. And then you see how these are going in opposite directions. This is coming down, this is going up. You may have to go ahead and clip, put little clips to get this to come together. Otherwise, I mean, you, you can get it to do, to, to um, work. It's not that severe of a curve, but your lining's gonna be pulled up. So let's try it both ways. If I take this and I just put this in, put these clips in, See how I'm having to pull this to make it work? Okay. So see how that is? And it's okay because once we flip it up, it'll, it'll be fine. Um, if you feel better, like I said, putting a few clips in there, you certainly can. Let's run with this and see how it works. So I'm going to hold this up as I stitch. I'm not going to let it just lay flat. I'm actually going to kind of hold it up. too bad. So now when you flip it up it'll stay nice and flat. All right I'm gonna do the same thing for this side and then we'll top stitch. Now this faux or actually I call it a vinyl that I'm working with is actually a little thick 
it's not it's definitely not domestic friendly so if you're thinking about getting some and you do not have an industrial machine it may not work but if you have an industrial machine you should be fine as you can see it's sewing it no problem just make sure you protect it as you go over humps because as you can see it's thick enough that that foot likes to drag on it we don't want any messed up projects all right so as i sew i'm just making sure the edges are together Lift this part up. So we're going to flip this up. We're going to make sure that the actual zipper placket is still facing down in the bag and we're going to top stitch. Now, I think this is gonna be okay, but just to be safe, I'm gonna put this in here. stitch this one and we'll be able to put all of this together So from here, let's go ahead and clip our lining on, I mean our gusset on. So I'm gonna start with this side. I'm gonna match up the seam of the gusset to my center mark. Go ahead and put a few clips in on each side and then match up the top of the sides. So I'll curve this around, match this up. And we're gonna have to snip our gusset to get it to lay flat because you always clip the straight edge now I'm going to take my zipper that's hanging out here and just clip it to itself so I don't accidentally sew over it. Make little snips. In your gusset so that it lays flat. I'm 
Now when I push it down in here, it'll lay nice and flat. Now by sewing it from the gusset side, we can kind of make sure that we're not going to have any tucks here. We can stop, reposition. take a peek and it is gorgeous no tucks okay so we're gonna sew our other side on now on this other side I'm gonna leave an opening in the bottom uh, you know about it was basically as big as I can because I need to pull the bag through so once I get around this curve and start going straight, I'm going to stop there and backstitch. I'm going to do the same thing over here, backstitch really well. So that way when I pull the bag through, I'm going to have a nice big opening to do that. And then we'll just pull this through our zipper pocket to get it all sewn together in the end. So I am going to clip it. So I want to make sure it fits right. So I'm going to start here at the bottom. Okay, and then clip my zipper out of the way so I don't sew it. And clip my edges. Okay, so I'm going to clip my gusset a little bit.
basically I'm just taking and kind of working out these um, potential tucks. And then right as I start on the straightaway, I'm going to back stitch real good and stop. Come over to this side, pick it back up. all together. So I'm going to take these off. Just going to make sure everything looks okay. Take my main part of my bag here. Now my concealed carry pocket, if you can see this, see it's kind of extending beyond the top of the bag here a little bit. I'm sure that's just, I cut it incorrectly or not properly. So I'm just going to, before I even put this together, I'm just gonna just barely cut this off so it's even with the top. So if you have that happen, sometimes you might have seams that don't exactly match up. Don't worry, the bag is not ruined. Just even it up and keep on going. All fixed. So I want the back of the bag to be the zipper pocket. So I'm gonna make sure I slide this in that way. Now, you see how much wider the bottom of this bag is than the top? You're gonna to have to kinda of fold this in half to get it in there, and then you can kinda of lay it back down. So let me first get it in there. And then I'm just going to let it open up. And go ahead and match up my seams first. Come on this side and do the same thing. Open up those seams. Then I'm going to clip the rest of the back together. Now, if you have a flatbed machine, you will put this on and you can sew from the inside here and sew around. Because the bag has a fairly narrow top opening, when you top stitch, you're probably going to do the same thing. You might even, if you want to top stitch from the right side, maybe turn it inside out to top stitch it. 
I'm going to go over to my cylinder arm. I know a lot of you have purchased cylinder arm machines because I've been watching on Facebook and all the different uh, groups and I'm so excited because so many of you are stepping up and getting those cylinder arms and they're just fantastic. So I'm excited for you. So let's go to the cylinder arm. We'll do a little bit of sewing on there and we'll go ahead and stitch this. We'll turn it and we'll top stitch it and we'll do all that over there. Okay, here we are. I'll set up at the Texo with the cylinder arm ready to go. This is a um, Texo 2750 and I know a lot of you have purchased these. I'm going to remind you if you're new to this, 100% of the time as you start to sew, you need to hang on to your threads. If you don't do that, you're going to be taking your machine apart. And I can tell you from experience, it's not fun. You have these teeny tiny little screws you have to take out and it's amazing how a tiny little piece of thread lodged in here will totally seize up this machine. Easy way to fix it, hang on to your threads as you start sewing. You can hang on to them in the front and it doesn't matter. You just don't want it to get sucked back into the machine. Okay? So, I'm going to stick this on. Oh, I'm going to raise my needle some here. There we go. I, you have a thread guide on these 20, assuming you got a 2750, you know, you have this thread guide that you can put down. Um, I say thread guide, it's a edge guide. Got my threads right here. And here we go. And you only have to hold it for one or two stitches. Like right there, it's good to go. You can let go now. When I sew on this machine, a lot of times, and if I'm not filming, I actually sew with one hand behind the machine and one hand in front, and I just kind of guide it that way. I know it's hard for you to see that way, so I'm trying not to do that. Um, but if you have a cylinder arm, that's how I suggest you sew. So essentially, you know, just kind of take one hand like this and It kind of helps guide it better, I think. So we have all that stitched, ready to go. I am just going to take a look and make sure, because we have several layers here, I want to make sure I caught the concealed carry pocket and that I don't have any seam showing right 
right here looks like I got real close. Let's see. Yeah, I need to get a little closer right here. So I'm not going to take it apart. All I'm going to do is just so a little bit closer to where I need to. So what I did is um, I had several layers here and I didn't sew in deep enough into the bag. I had a little of the main fabric sticking out so I didn't take a big enough seam allowance. So just right here, I'm gonna go back and just stitch over that. fixed it. Just double check. Okay, it looks good. There's nothing, nothing worse than turning a bag and then having to turn it back and fix something. I'm going to check this side as well. With that pocket, that exterior pocket that comes up to the top, you just want to make sure you caught that. And it looks like I did. Okay. So now what we're going to do is through this big wide opening. We're not going to try to pull this through the zipper pocket. We're going to pull it through the bottom. So the next thing I'm going to do is, before I close up this bottom, I'm going to go ahead and top stitch. So, go ahead and stuff the lining inside. I'm going to go ahead and clip along this top edge. I'm going to make sure I roll the seam so that the actual seam itself is at the very top. Now in some of these places you've got some good thickness because you have your concealed carry pocket. If you have a pocket like I did, you have that at the top. So we're gonna put this machine to the test. I can't even get a clip on that. So I can feel that this is really thick right here. It's right here at this seam. So before I try to stitch through that, I'm going to take some, actually I think I'm going to hammer it. So I'm not going to do that on camera, but I'm going to take this over to my little hammer station. I'm going to lay this down on a piece of granite, like something hard, and I'm just going to hammer each one of these seams to kind of get them to lay flatter. I mean, you can see the clips are having a hard time staying on because it is thick. Okay, the hammering did help some. So if you have any doubt as to what a 2750 can handle, if you don't think it's going to be able to handle everything you need to throw at it, we're going to test this out. We're going to see. I think it's going to be fine. I am going to use my little old leather piece here to protect my project from my foot, though, as we go along on some of these side, or these seams because they are thick. All right. Let's give it a whirl.
So it had no problem getting through the thickness. I had a little bit of difficulty getting over some of the humps, as you can see. All right, so there we go. So from here, you want to go ahead and open up your zipper on the inside. You're going to reach in and pull out your zipper pocket. And then you're going to reach in and pull out the bottom of your bag where the opening is. We want to go ahead and close that up. All right, I'm going to line up my center mark on my lining with this seam. Where I'm going to kind of start because I know that that's lined up and then I'll just go ahead and clip the rest we're going to sew this and then close up our pocket Go ahead and put that lining back in to the pocket. Pull your pocket lining out and then go ahead and fold it and clip it. Now you could certainly have pre-pressed this. I usually don't. I usually just fold it as I go here. I'm going to open up the seam allowance as I fold this over just to make it lay a little bit flatter. Okay, so we're going to sew this closed. down real good. I'm going to go ahead and straighten out my lining here. So from here all we have to do is put our zipper pull on, put our handles on, and then we are done. So I'm going to do that and then we'll take a look at it. So here we are, the completed bag. I have the crossbody strap on. It is a great size. All right. It's nice because the handles are just the right size where you kind of keep it under your arm. I like to do that. And of course you have the crossbody too if you want to wear it that way. Love this pocket. Love, love, love this pocket. And I love that there's one in the front and there's one in the back. You may want to use cotton canvas for some of these parts if you are unsure of what your machine can handle. If you do not have a industrial machine definitely do not use vinyls or faux leathers for the whole thing like I did because um, there was definitely a couple places where it was super thick and I know that my uh, domestic machine would not go through it so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you did give it a thumbs up so that other people can find it that certainly helps other people find me and until next time happy sewing <laughs>